will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Those are Solomon's word on the temple's dedication. They are in 1 Kings chapter 8, and there in Solomon's dedication of the magnificent temple in Jerusalem, those words are a profound moment of spiritual reflection. Let's dive in to this chapter and discover at least three important lessons, three timeless truths that resonate with the core of our faith. First, God's incomprehensible majesty. Solomon, in his wisdom, acknowledges the incomprehensible majesty of God. The dedication prayer reveals a deep awareness that the God who spoke the universe into existence is beyond the confines of any earthly structure. The heavens themselves cannot contain him. This recognition should humble each one of us, should invite us to awe and to be reverence when we are in worship to him. Our God is not limited by the dimensions of temples and churches. He transcends all human constructs. Let us approach him then with a sense of wonder, acknowledging the limitless nature of his greatness. Second, God's covenant faithfulness. Uh, this is so beautiful because within his prayer, Solomon reflects on God's covenant and how faithful is that covenant. Remember, the temple symbolizes the fulfillment of the promise made to David, showcasing God's commitment to his people. When God says to David, you will not build the temple, your son will do it. Just as God remained faithful to Israel, he remains faithful to each one of us. In our lives, we will encounter challenges and uncertainties, yet God's promises endure. The temple's dedication serves as a reminder that God's faithfulness is unwavering. As we navigate life's journey, let us anchor our hope in the unchanging nature of God and His promises. The third lesson that we can get from this chapter is the invitational nature of prayer. Solomon's prayer is an invitation for God's presence to dwell in the temple. It echoes an essential truth that God desires a relationship with you and me because we are his people. The temple, though grand, is merely a physical space. God's true dwelling place is in the hearts of those who seek him. Our prayers, like Solomon's, extend an invitation for God to inhabit our lives, to guide and transform each one of us. Let us cultivate a spirit of prayer inviting God into every aspect of our life, every aspect of our existence, knowing that His presence is the source of true joy and fulfillment. Then, 1 Kings chapter 8 should inspire us to reflect on God's incomprehensible majesty, His covenant faithfulness, and the invitational nature of prayer. May we approach our Creator with awe, trust in His enduring promises, and continually invite His presence into our lives today, tomorrow, and forever. God bless you.